Yo, what is going on guys? Jacob here as always, and today I am doing an update on the M104 rebuild, so let's jump right into it. Back, 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 back. So my plan with this engine is to get roughly 400 horsepower out of a standard stock engine. So that means no reinforcing anything internally of the engine, slapping a turbo onto the outside, and boosting it to 400 horsepower. So if I can build this engine to make double the horsepower from factory and have it last 100,000 miles, that is a win for me. So that's my goal. Let's take a look at the internals. So first we have to look through the engine block and to start that off we'll check the top deck to make sure it's flat and that there's no pitting or anything like that. Make sure that the surface is reusable and then we want to uh, check the bores. Make sure there's no damage. Check. Now we'll take a look at the block from the bottom side. We want to check the oil pan surface and check the bores from the bottom side also. We want to check where the bearings sit too and make sure that there's no obvious damage. Check. Next we want to check the front of the block for cracking. Sometimes cracks can form around the oil galleries that you see here at the front. But it's very uncommon and it usually only happens in extreme horsepower situations or if the rotating assembly is unbalanced. Check. Next is to check the crank and cams. Make sure that the rotating and bearing surfaces all are in good condition and reusable. The only thing worth noting here is the crankshaft, the number one journal, has a slight groove in it from something, but otherwise the crankshaft is in perfect condition. Check. Now we'll check out the head and make sure that, first of all, the surfaces where the valve seat do not have pits or scarring or anything. We also want to make sure that the surface that contacts the top deck of the block is in good condition. It's also a good idea to take a look through the intake and exhaust ports to make sure that everything looks good in there. Check! Next, it's a good time to take a look at the valves and make sure the seating surfaces are good, the tops where they're pushed down are good, and the locations where they ride inside of the valve guide are in good condition as well, with no scoring or obvious damage or excessive wear. Check! And now is a good time to rewrite labels that are wearing off because oil got on things that you didn't anticipate. Now we'll check the cam caps and make sure that there's no scoring or damage to them or any excessive wear. Check! Want to make sure we haven't lost any of our hardware, everything is documented, and make sure no bolts have any stretch. Check. Still keeping track of our hardware, and also make sure that the front drive sprocket is in good condition and can be reused. Check. Now we'll check the main bearing cap bolts and the main bearing caps themselves. Make sure the bolts don't have any stretch. Check. Next is the pistons, and in my case, the dry lubricant coating has partially been worn off and there's a little bit of wear on the sides of the piston. However, I am going to reuse these pistons, and I'm going to recoat the skirts, and I'm going to put a ceramic coating on the tops of the pistons. Check! Now we can take a look at the connecting rods and the connecting rod bearings, and the sleeves of the wrist pins slide through. Check! Next is looking at the wrist pins, and we're making sure that they look like they were well lubricated and don't have scoring or damage. Check! Next, the hydraulic lifters. Make sure they don't have any excessive wear or damage. Check! Next is to take a look at the top of the head. We want to check the ceiling surfaces, make sure that everything is flat and that there's no pitting or damage. We also want to take a look at the bearing surfaces, as well as a good general inspection to make sure there's no damage. Check! A couple of the exhaust bearing surfaces have some scoring but it's nothing too bad. And the frontmost bearing surface for the intake cam has some wear on it, but I think everything is okay and it's gonna go back together just fine. After some polishing, of course. And here are the main bearings. You can see that there is some wear and in a couple of spots there's a couple of grooves, but for the most part they're in decent condition. I'm not gonna show the crank rod bearings, but they were in similar condition. Hey guys, if you're getting value from this content, please leave a like or even subscribe. That helps me to grow my channel and it tells me that I'm helping you guys out, which is my ultimate goal. That's why I have this channel here. Um, anyways, like, comment, and subscribe. And any question that you might have, just leave down in the comments and I'll definitely get back to you. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next one.